This is the war atlas for the German High Command for Operation Barbarossa. In an ongoing conference organized by Noisy Reality, a 21st century look at June 22, 1941 is being taken. Here in part four in this series, as respected author Craig Luther speaks about Army Group Center's progress during that fateful first day of the campaign, we'll see rare associated film material. In order to show it on this platform, some of the more graphic footage had to be censored. Now let's look, now here we have some significant advance here. Here's the northern part of uh, Army Group uh, Center. Haas Panzer Group did make a significant penetration as far as the Neiman River there, 50, 60 kilometers. And yes, I think it, it was the 7th Panzer Division, a battalion under Rothenburg captured a, a bridgehead over the Neiman River. And here's the funny thing, tells you a little bit how the Russians fought. They were able to capture that bridge, very important bridge, I believe sometime in the afternoon. The Russians, of course, their sappers had prepared it for demolition. And there was a Russian Red Army dude sitting there, ready to, to press down on the plunger and blow it up, but he never did. And when the Germans got across the bridge and captured him and asked him why he didn't blow it up, he said, well, it's because you got here at one o'clock I had orders to blow up the bridge at three. I will say from the very first day of the campaign, the very opening hours, I mean, there were some Ru Russian units which gave up en masse, right? And, and many of those, I think, were Russian units that had been formed from men from the west part of the Ukraine that had been taken over by the Russians when they took over eastern Poland and pressed into service with the Red Army. So they weren't too happy about that, and some of them gave up. But more often than not, from the very beginning, after just recovering from the shock, they fought back with an intensity that just flummoxed the Germans. From the very start, you hear about Russian sharpshooters mm -hmm. and the toll that they are taking you know, picking off individual soldiers, picking off messengers on motorcycles, that sort of thing. And uh, you see comments in letters written home from the very start of the war. Geez, um, Broomhilda, uh, we're not in France anymore. This is a totally different situation. Then, of course, the war crimes. You know, the Germans committed horrible war crimes, okay? We all know that. But it's not true that the Russians only started reciprocating, you know, killing prisoners and so forth, after they figured out what the Germans were doing. Because from the very opening hours of the campaign, the German reconnaissance patrol, for example, that pushed too far ahead. Uh, led by an, an overambitious sergeant or something, gets cut off, captured by the Russians, and they end up with their all their extremities hacked off, their nose, their ears, their genitals. This sort of thing happened repeatedly from the very opening hours of the campaign. Now I'm looking here at the Ninth Army front. This two corps, it looks like they rolled back the Russians 15, 20 kilometers here. Yeah, they, they did a 20, 30 kilometer advance from most of the core was, was pretty common. Some, of course, made it farther. And I see you're getting into the sector of Guderian. And above him, of course, was Luga, right? Yeah, his fourth army. And there's also the uh, 24th Panzer Corps under Schweppenberg which was on the other side They're They're each on yeah. one side of the, of the town of Brest. Uh, here, the 24th? Yeah, yeah, there it is. The 17th Panzer Division and, and, and the 18th. That is, they're both, they're both part of, of, of Guderian's two panzer group, but uh, they have different, uh, different commanders. 
uh, the third and fourth were a part of one Panzer Corps, were commanded by by Schweppenberg, and the 17th and 18th by uh, von Lemelson. The 18th Panzer Division advanced quite a way under General Nehring. By the way, his son fortunately became ill and, and took his life back in 2016. He, he wrote the foreword for my book, uh, Barbarossa Unleashed. But his mm -hmm. father's 18th Panzer Division, which Guderian spent a lot of time, he, he hooked up with it and traveled with it on the 22nd of June. But it, it saw some combat with Soviet mechanized forces and advanced uh, quite a, a distance, 40 or, or 50 kilometers. Guderian, of course, his first objective was Minsk, about 300 kilometers away as the crow flies. And in the final conference at the Reich's Chancellery on the 14th of June, the final big conference before the start of Barbarossa, he was asked, how long do you think it will take you to get to Minsk? He said six days. And he actually got there on the seventh day, I think. His spearhead uh, entered the city from the south, and Hoth's uh, spearheads uh, encircled it uh, to the north. All right. And let's look at uh, any other comments uh, before we hit Army Group South. The fighting for the fortress of brest you know, you want to have any idea how tough this Eastern campaign was going to be. The, it was the German 45th Infantry Division, which actually was largely uh, of, of the, the, the rank and file were, were, were mostly Austrian, but I think it had mostly German commanders. Because during the battle for France, it had captured an important fortress over the Aisne River, I believe. It was earmarked to capture the fortress of Brest-Litovsk, okay? And and they needed it to, to to at least neutralize it to to clear up the, the, the lines of communication for uh, Guderian's panzer group. So they needed to take it out and to clear up the, the, the Panzerstrasse that, that his tanks were going to advance along primarily. The 45th Infantry Division attacked, of course, early in the morning they had a naval Werfer regiment that literally launched 2,880 missiles in like half an hour or so at the fortress. But they had all kinds of artillery. But the, and of course they had they had a couple of uh, 600 millimeter rail guns you know had to be transported by railroad firing on that fortress i think they each only managed to fire a few shells and they had mechanical breakdowns but the commander of the 45th infantry i think his name was schlieper he still did not think the artillery program was robust enough and figured that the primary effect would simply be psychological and not material and he was probably right because the attack looked like it was going well until about 7, 8 in the morning. And then Red Army resistance there began to radically stiffen. The long and short of it is by late afternoon, the Germans had to pull back all their forces in the fortress, except for 60 men who were cut off in a church. They had to pull them back and just just put them in a ring around the fortress because they weren't making uh, any progress. They lost on that day more men than any other division on the Eastern Front. Use the QR code or this link to get to our Patreon page and see our different levels of support to get access to exclusive footage that can't be shown here. Open a free account on our website, military1945.com. If you like this kind of material, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks for watching.